Welcome in this video of the House of Asian Cinema. Following the video I did about music in Hong Kong film, I thought it would be interesting to have the perspective from a composer, someone who is working in the industry nowadays, in order to highlight how things are different compared to the golden age of Hong Kong cinema or even earlier. So I've reached to Mr. Yusuke Atano, who has been composing soundtracks in Hong Kong for almost 10 years who was kind enough to agree to answer the many questions I had to ask him about this subject. I hope you will find his insight interesting and you will learn new things about how Hong Kong films are made nowadays. Enjoy! Well, I was like one of the weird type of composer how I even started the music because most musicians would have a child training since they're young and they just go up to the music school where I started um, piano very late. I only had a piano training in two, about two years or so when I went to childhood and when I'm 16 which I was already I was traveling around the world um, I was born in the United States then I moved to Japan and I moved to Malaysia it was in Malaysia time. Back then they didn't have a Facebook. I didn't have any friends that was able to connect to the internet so I was pretty much like very lonely and then it was around 16 when I um, started to touch the piano suddenly and then simu simultaneously I was listening to Japanese game soundtracks that time I was I had an urge to suddenly want to compose a game soundtrack ish music out of nowhere you know I, I don't know any theory but I just studied by myself and then that moment I felt that you know the loneliness and the, all the emotion that was like stuck in my heart like just suddenly burst out from my body I, I was 16 and then I remember every moment I had goosebumps when I just started touching that every chord I play I had to, wow this is amazing <laughs> so I was just really self-taught um, pianist self-taught composer I including arranging and then until I was I was a math major and then I st entered Australian University but I found a way to secretly take an audition uh, to, to take a Bachelor of Music in the University of Queensland in Australia and I was able to, I didn't have any classical degree so I ha end up buying like I went to the teacher and saying I want I want to go to the audition I want to do the composition degree do you know any classical music? Do you know Ravel? I don't know. Uh, who's Ravel? I don't know anything <laughs> about classical music. But I still wanted to study because that was, uh, that's just, it's my ambition. And then, okay, um, you'd, you're supposed to have a great eight degree, but um, okay, you can still take the audition, but you still have to perform a great eight degree of piano performance for your audition. I'm like, okay. Uh, that day I went to, that day after I heard that, I went to the, to the music shop and bought a CD that just randomly. And then I bought a, book that, that says Beethoven Sonata Pathetic. So that was at level 8. So I bought that and I bought a CD and just listened to the CD and just practiced. And that's how I went to the audition. <laughs> and I miraculously passed! Somehow! And I at, at the same time I gave my composition, original composition and then that's how I entered the music. Not even a profession, but the music ac academy like properly. Then after I graduated my a classical um, degree. First time I studied classical music, great experience. And then um, I was doing a part-time job in a playing piano in a Chinese restaurant in Australia. The shop owner was very nice. Happened to be a Hong Kong owner, and she was very worried for me. She's like, you know, you, she knows she knows that I don't have a proper official job. I'm a musician. And then she asked me to be a full-time pianist in the restaurant after I graduated. So that was my first profession. I was started as a restaurant pianist, mm. as the first time like making a living with music. And after two years, I came to Hong Kong. Yeah. Mm. That was definitely because of my wife. I met my wife during the school time in the uh, University of Queensland time. And that time I was like, I was wanting to be a game soundtrack composer because that was my original ambition I was planning to go back to Japan but she's like come to Hong Kong why not Hong Kong you know and then I came to Hong Kong and like as a tourist visa first and then I seemed I happened to like it Hong Kong is a very multicultural place very friendly to even a foreigner like me Japanese and then so I 
just had a trial with a tourist visa and then in one month I found a working visa as a musician in a hotel again in a hotel that was the toughest and the most precious experience for me even now to be a film composer or any type of like music the musicianship that I learned in the hotel is just it's something not academic but well anyways that's the reason I came to Hong Kong because I was a hotel musician playing seven days a week seven sets a day every day for a year <laughs> no holiday so and then you have to learn like a thousand plus of songs from 1920s to the latest hits and then in Latin or jazz or bossa nova or the rock and the Hemi Mancini to Ed Sheeran and you have to know it off your heart in any key so this is what I've learned in the hotels actually the interesting thing was I was I was not here in Hong Kong to be a film composer but I had the ambition to be a, a composer arranger but first job luckily I had that foundation to work in a hotel and then one day like my mother-in-law introduced me some Hong Kong directors or Hong Kong Hong Kong film industry people and they came over to see my performance I was playing in a small bar again and they're like oh Yusuke you happen to use you happen to compose and then yes there are a lot of musicians that compose but there's not much musician that can uh, compose with computer we call it computer music and not much computer music people will perform live you know? so I happen to be the rare type that does both so he's like oh Yusuke why don't you try to work on my short film was, his name is Laman Chong Yes, and he asked me to do his short film, and then I tried my best. Well, I had the seven sets, so I had to do the seven sets, and I come back home, and I had, had like a little bit of, I just cut my down sleep, sleep, cut down the sleep time to do the music, and then that's how I just keep doing it. And then I got another short film from Henry Wong, and that was Chong Hao Mei. When I got the film, I still I was still doing the hotel job, and after that I had another short film. I was still doing the hotel job, and my first full. Lo um, two like full film, full feature film. I was still doing the hotel job. <laughs> I just really had a hard time. But of course, you know, my first ambition was I have to make a living with music. But th um, luckily, I was able to do that. So the, s the real ambition was to be a comp composer. So I just didn't. Yeah, I rather cut down my health <laughs> to make my dream come true. I was influenced by f film, like more like a mainstream kid. Like I was, for example, Japanese are, I think most Japanese are influenced by a composer called Joe Hisaishi. He's a most famous animation composer globally and then in Japan. And then there's another super well known, the strong influence on me is Sakamoto Ryuichi. I think those two composers are definitely most like influ strong influence in me um, but similarly um, there's a animation composer game animation soundtrack also film composer called Yoko Kanno she is a strongest influence in me because she has a very versatile genre in her genre from electro jazz to super classical music to pop songs so I am really respecting her because of that variation and I tend to be in that style of like having a, like a more wider variation like her so I think the strongest influence might be her but at the same time I'm a musician which I tried to study jazz Latin so a lot of jazz pianists like Keith Jarrett Keith, uh, Bill, Bill Evans Derda or mm, who like a lot of those jazz musicians, pianists are similarly strong influence in me, even in the film side. Yeah. I think Japanese was lucky to have a quick jump start in, in um, digesting American culture, not just music, but uh, even the American food culture, American 
mu musical culture and like overall and Japanese are very quick in adapting something and then transforming into their own stuff for example car you know it's not invented by Japanese but you have Toyota like or computer or TVs a lot of Japanese I think in a very big picture like are, are very good in like absorbing something and then transferring it to s we call it in Japan we call it zero to one or one to one hundred I think Japanese na naturally are very good in one to one hundred yeah I think of that that skill is very good so that might be one reason another reason is this is my own theory and I never heard this somewhere but Japanese has a lot of um thing a lot we we describe a lot of sound with our words for example this is like a sound of water raining strongly or raining softly or the water might be just dripping over or this water is just like being a little bit wet so uh, like textures have a sound and then we z like like this is zara zara this is sara sara beto beto is a little bit wet like for example so that's why maybe it's the na nature of japanese language so when I see those drum tom sound, there are dun daka duko dun da. There, there's there's a lot of verbal <laughs> description in sound. So maybe I don't know if this is uh, this is my own theory, but maybe Japanese language might be an influence on how Japanese tend to hear it sounds in a detailed way because it's easy to speak it out with their culture. That's definitely built who I am. <laughs> I think um, I was always having difficulties, like where my home is, or and at the same time, since I was born, I was sort of forced to study Japanese and English together. Now I can. I'm in Hong Kong. I speak a little bit of Cantonese. When I was in Singapore, I studied Mandarin. So I speak like two full language and two half, lang like four languages. People always say music is language, yeah? So, the f interesting thing is jazz, classical, it's, it's like, a, it's same music with the piano, but it's just, it's a really different language. And if you want to speak it fluently, you have to really study into their culture, like classical culture, who is Beethoven, who is Mozart, who's, if it's jazz, who is, you know, Oscar Peterson, and how are they influenced each other and that's why when you have an open mind to study different languages it means you're open-minded to study different culture it's, it's a very similar mentality you have to, to be open-minded to study different genre sometimes you are scared to learn the new genre maybe heavy metal or maybe EDM or maybe classical they, they have sometimes there's like a border there that they don't want to jump in but I think because of my nature of eating different countries' food, living in different like culture all the time, so I'm very open to every genre. Um, I did about quite a few films, but like my music also have a very versatile heavy metal or like like very classical or very a little bit of Japanese pop, Japanese rock, or like an English heavy metal, or it could be. In the seventies Japanese <laughs> music that's it's not even in my generation, but I I just love to adapt that language because it's just like studying a new language, you know, as if as I'm traveling into a new country. <laughs> it's rather fun for me to do that. It's a very hard question to answer. <laughs> but I I would love to answer this question. This because um I think it's okay. I think it's okay to have a trend and um, it's not a bad thing to be influenced. The fact is, language and music is a pile of history. It's impossible to invent something new without studying the history too. That's my theory. You can be blindlessly doing something random, but that's not... You're just being random. Like, there's a... Th there's a theory that I want to say that, like, for example, the word, like, I love you, 
you want to say this word um, and then but the, I love the word love is not invented by you it's invented by the English w history and past and this so you're what you're saying you're trying to make your own genre of music it's like saying say I love you without using the word love and then like, make, make invent a word that means love but like how it's like it's that's impo that's not that easy to do without learning a lot of <laughs> you cannot just make up a lang make up a word and say this means love I think you if you want to be very creative and new and jump out of this um, formula that the master have created you first have to learn that and then break that um, I think this is the, this is not only music this is in any type of art form even in painting and even in a uh, martial arts like um, Bruce Lee was oriented uh, from origin by the Wen Chun culture but he broke that he did study Wen Chun then he broke that up so if you want to um, it's, mu it's very convenient to learn the formula like that the master have created that's why they are called masters they, they create this formula and then it's nothing wrong to be influenced by that but you have to not just copy it but steal that intention and idea and you have to eventually before you die make your own formula if you can then you can you might be able to be called a master and I think a lot of young composers are always including me are struggling to find our own formula <laughs> yeah. when I when I first got this um, reference music I had a hard time but now because like yes I thought I have to copy the genre but that was not the intention now I know that the director just um, wants what I have to do is I have to get the director's intention not the genre I think um, the director cannot hear the chords or the melody like how we do but we we think oh the director must want this classical or this Hans Zimmer like drums but it's actually what the director wants is that intensity because this character is thinking like this so what what I have to and then all the composer when they hear the reference music they have to get know the director's intention not the style of the music the style of the music can be replaced as long as the intention is the same yeah, as long as you really understand he put this music because this character is thinking this way you know? if you understand that bone fundament f like fun foundation idea the different genres st could still be applied and sometimes uh, it, it might be a there will be a better reference and um, so I think for me it's useful because it's I'm just trying to ignore the genre I'm just trying to always get the director's intention and like, whereas sometimes this like one eye movement means a lot for the director and we might miss it so in that case the reference music is quite helpful I, will, I would love to it's not all films have the enough time t for the every single scene but if the like often I'll make a music and then they when we have enough time the director will of course come to my studio and then he will tell me this this movement means a lot actually I want have a key point here so that's like the time that we maybe fine tune the music and um, sometime I might find something that he didn't notice too so I think that's that communication is very important the first short film like that what went on the cinema was the one of the most interesting film <laughs> it's called hardcore comedy the name is already hardcore to start with and the film is even more hardcore <laughs> I hope if you're interested please go watch um, this was yes uh, limited in budget because Hemi Wong director was the first time directing a film and then it was a short film three short films put putting it together so it was even like you know, smaller because it's shorter um, the thing was like there was a theme song that he wanted to put inside so I was like okay and then he wanted this very like 80s Japanese heroic 
Power Ranger music. <laughs> like, okay, that sounds interesting in a film. Okay, why not? And then one of, one day, this I was in the car and my wife was driving, and then like suddenly this melody came up in my mind. It's in Cantonese, but the music is in Japanese. 90s music and it just sounded so funny that I burst into laugh in the middle of a, in the middle of a highway and my mother was like what's going on you are crazy but anyway because I heard all of this all this arrangement and the lyric together and then this was so this kind of creative stuff I like I didn't have again going back to the budget I didn't have someone to hire to sing for me so I I sang it myself and I sang it at home with my own mic and I showed it to the director he said this is awesome Let's just use this. So I, we end up just using that me singing because well, one is he liked how you know it was Japanese, but it's Hong Kongese, and then I think we had that little bit of freedom to be creative because you know there's not we're not aiming for there's no high risk, so that was a good part. And then the second part was like I was singing a theme song. I'm not even a singer, <laughs> and then the, be- the the even amazing part was he. Boosted that theme song on the on the like commercial line. Do you know those cars bus that you go around the the city and then he played that song. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and then like so my my voice was around Hong Kong like and then this kind of f- freedom of creativity does exist in this <laughs> in this type of film too. So um, I think that was one crazy thought. Like another thing, there was another film called um, Han Wan Seeing All Happiness. And that film was also sang, the demo was sang by me again because uh, for the reason, and I just wanted to show the director. And then he's like, oh, I love it. And I love it how you sing it. You just sing it. So I sh- it just happened to be my version <laughs> to be used in the film inside a film as an of official theme song of this film and then s- miraculously that was nominated in the Hong Kong Film Award <laughs> so miraculously I was I did perform in Hong Kong Academy like a Hong Kong Film Academy Award because of that reason mm-hmm. okay. so I wouldn't say it's always bad sometimes you have some limitation you better twist it to um, make it to your strength and um, find it as a chance you never know you might perform in a big stage like me (laughs) um i think really depends directors are very generous on me they do give me like two months to do stuff which is uh, like nice um but there was an experience of line walker 2 that gave me one month (laughs) including the mixing with the fixing so that was the hardest shortest and um Lion Walker 2 is a by the way Lion Walker 2 is showing in Japan very soon in the cinema and that is gonna that is like an action film that music never stops so that was one of the memorable experiences that I would like to you know never forget (laughs) non-sleeping days as a composer yeah uh, it might be because they want to show the film in the mainland and then there's some time limit particular day that they want to show so maybe they thought they want to show in a er- later day but they found a better day so i think it, but it is a common thing for the pre-production is that the right word pre-production to take a longer time and the post-production will be squashed a little bit that's quite a common thing i, I do see in the industry i don't know if it's common in other countries but at least in hong kong they do want to make it good and take a long time to shoot but the the, sh- the day that they want to sh- show is limited so they sometimes have to squash the squash the right derek kwok was very um strongly influenced in japanese music so japanese culture like in overall he like l- luckily he asked me to do some Japanese 80s music and actually I think not much Hong Kong film does that kind of like Japanese 80s there are Japanese 
Hong Kong music does have a Japanese influence in during the 80s, but putting that Japanese 80s music in a film in 2003 or 4 is a risk. So I think it's definitely not my choice. It's a director, Kwok and Henry Wong. Both of them had a very strong,、uh, what's the word, talent to just realize that this type of music match this particular film. And not only that, um, um, he, even the theme song <laughs> was in that style. It was so influential that later on、um, I had a movie. Called Zombiology, but the director first wanted to have the Foo Strike style of music. He was that influenced by Foo Strike, which、um, later on I'll explain. It did, at the end, it, I, that didn't happen. But I think、um, the fact that the director was very talented in, in asking me to do that genre, and again, my background of adapting that music. And then putting it into in the film, like somehow had a good chemistry. So it made that music very interesting. And well, I actually, we showed that music, we showed that film in Osaka in Japan also, and the people were surprised. Some people thought this music was composed in the 80s too. And they never expected it was made by a, a boy from 1986 who was not born yet. <laughs> yeah, so that was the interesting part. This film was like not too far after the first track, and it's like a very completely different style in terms of film and the music. Both、uh, the music was about the mentally disabled main character, and then he, the director himself, is a musician actually. So there w a s many, many nights that he just c o m e to the house and he just s i t next to me. and、um, We're watching this screen, and I'm just spontaneously improvising as if as I'm in a hotel, I have a keyboard, and I'm just playing. He's like, Oh, I like that. Can you, can you stop from here and play again? Play, play, play. I stop that. Because、like, first time we composed, I composed a lot of things, and then something, this director was a very, very sensitive director, and he had this particular scene to have this particular sound, and I couldn't pick up every single moment. So he, at the end, that was how we, so we sort of、like、composed it together. And、um, because he's a musician, he, he can really tell. We sort of communicated and sort of composed the music together. There was one unforgettable part, was as a climax of the film. The main character had a mental breakdown.、Um, and then he, he b e c o m e crazy. And he r u n into the supermarket and started eating chocolate. That didn't he, he didn't buy, so he's like a crazy man. This scene, I, com- I, ch- I think I had like seven, eight, I just keep composing, and he said, Change this, keep composing, change this. And I, I, at the end, I had no more idea. I'm like, What can I do? And then, Dark, okay, I mean, I'll come to your house. And, then again, and this was only like a week before we have to finish the music, so I'm like so scared. I'm, 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 I'm worried for him, you know, I, I might not a- be able to finish this climax of the scene, and then. He said, It's okay, he's okay. Like, believe in me. He sat down with me, and then at the end, I just, I just improvised this one long take. He's like, Yusuke, Let's just use this. And <laughs> then we just used that music. Yeah, and that, it's like、um, the music was、uh, mimicking a, like a supermarket sound. But that, it's, so it's a function of、uh, those background supermarket s o u n d but it's, it's secretly intentionally. Telling this main character's mental breakdown, so the music is slowly getting louder. So it was like, a, before I had a very be- be- beautiful string quartet music that's like so emotional, and then you know, at the end, we used that one shot improvising <laughs> piano take. Yeah, so I think you never know. I mean, that, that, make me, that also m a k e me learn. I think there's just many ways to compose the music, and luckily, I was a musician from the hotel that I, I was able to. Function that way, yeah. Otherwise, I would, I, I don't know what I'd have done. <laughs> yes, that's one secret story from the film.、Mm. Being a little、um, musical, I might sometime I would consider what instrument would be the core 
of of the film, and it might be the piano y sound, or it might be the guitar sound, and of course the genre and you know, that storytelling does come along, orchestral or you know, folky. I think because I was able to access into so many different genre. Though I'm not a guitarist, I know I just know how different genre works. So if I have to split it, I think the mad world was very piano a little bit a classical not really classical but str- piano and string oriented where um happiness was very folk and guitar oriented and that will already differentiate the tone to start with. Um I think the director was a friend before be working together and um he did give me some time to to try and error. I think one of the opening scene that I the of the happiness was a music I I dreamed. <laughs> it was one of the days, you know, some some musician would dream a sound and then you wake up and then is this a sound that exists or what? Sounds like it's not so then I just use that melody and then I apply that in the opening scene of the of that film. So I think I don't yeah, I didn't think it was a it was a problem to, to differentiate that two subject. Yeah. After if after when you look the happiness is much more heartwarming and because there's a there's a there's a like a f- family love in in a much more warmer way. Um yeah. One thing I I recently like to try to understand about music is I don't I don't want to be too theoretical. Like because musicians are naturally so theoretical, like oh this is F sharp if this is like this is like you jump to this key change and this but I liked how the Matt Ward director, um he Chong he he always described as cold. This sound is so cold, this sound is so dark. And he, he would describe to much like a texture or a temperature or a feeling and then at the f- beginning as a math starter I didn't understand what that meant cold cold chord okay let me <laughs> I was switching to cold chord I, don't, I have no idea but I think there's no answer but like I when I keep thinking about that it's much more um, emotionally driven when I judge music so again that comes to when the director put the music as a reference I do try to get the director's inten- when I try to get the director's intention I don't try to listen to the harmony or the theoretical or the general I just try to listen to that what emotion is this yeah, only and I just only capture that like as if as I'm not a, I'm a non-musician yeah. I think that that ear is super important the more you study theory the more, impo- more the harder it gets to capture this emotion so this is something I'm really working hard on it. Oh, this is okay. Every film has a very interesting story. This, I, I this, um, the director was um asking me to do a music genre in the full strike style, which is 80s music, and um, my sense was telling me no, <laughs> don't, please don't, and then um. I wanted to com uh, like it's not a fight, but we I was trying to convince that this is this is my this might be what you want, but I think this um metal rock music would fit better to this film. And then how I convinced that was so there's a theme song that he wanted me to make and then uh I make one rock song, he didn't like it. I make a second one that's following the eighties music but nobody liked it. As I didn't like it either, <laughs> and then the third song, the third demo theme song, I really liked it. I really, 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 really liked it. But I, I also felt scared because if they don't, he doesn't like it. You know, I have no more ideas. So I brought that song on my phone, and I went to his studio, like um, director studio, and he had his, like, you know, team. I, I came over and said, I have a song to share to you. Okay. And I plug it to my phone to the speaker, and I just sang with like a like a like a fake mic, and I just like danced like crazy and sang in front of the director like this close. 
And then what I wanted to do was this musicianship that when you show music through MP3, you cannot feel the energy, right? But I, I know that this song will have this strong energy. So then my musician side came up and said, I want to perform this song in front of you and then see how this exciting this music can be. And so that's why I was like, Tende, Saru, like that. And then that, he was actually recording me performing and then that personal video went <laughs> viral around this whole team and the whole team loved it. So yes, yeah, so that convinced him and the whole team to use this song as a theme song um, of the Zombieology, yeah, which is like a heavy metal J rock, I would say. J, and it's not a heavy metal, but it's like more like a fast J rock song. Um, that's very outside of Hong Kong music culture. I think there's no really hard to find that kind of music. And again, because it's like a fun film, the director is young. Um, maybe it's not like the Hollywood scale therefore I had the creativity space if you and this not much people might know but um, there's a teaser that's like about a minute long and then this teaser shows uh, this shows different type of character who's coming and the reference music is just a you know like exciting Hollywood film but at the end what I did was um, I was able to collaborate with this heavy metal Hong Kong local artist that shouts ah! and then he shouted all the ar- actors name <laughs> so, so it's like a it's like a it's like a really shout heavy metal music using as a teaser <laughs> and then somehow it functioned very well it's one of my favorite creative work that not much people knows but I'm very proud of it myself <laughs> yeah I think I think so I th- this my, my, this child inner child in me always pop up once in a while and then I do do it behind the scene that it might, people not, might not see yeah it's with and um, if you look at the film there's a lot of action scenes that I'm using I met like a quite a heavy rock music um, again, because the director allowed me to do so at the end, so I think that's and I don't play guitar. <laughs> I know how it works, so yeah, I I that's like I use the computer music first and then ask the real guitarist to record afterwards. So I I think sorry to keep going back, but that's I was able to do that because I had the musicianship through the hotel work experience. I know every... I, I do... I have the will to understand that language. Not just like, pretend to understand. Yeah. So that's that's another interesting film. Mm. I'm quite a playful boy in, in me. So once in a while in the film, I do want to be very playful. Not for the audience to notice, for rather for my personal satisfaction. One was in the hardcore, co- hardcore comedy, one was in the Full Strike. I can describe from the Full Strike. Full Strike, like some, there was a scene where there was an um, actor called Lam Man Chung. He's acting a very crazy, drunken man with a knife. And he just appears just in a very chaotic way. And uh, um, I, I did put a, like a classical opera music. Oh, oh, oh. Um, that's all. But if you listen to the word carefully, it's saying "pokai, pokai, pok mego gai, pokai." Ask my classical singer to sing that for me. <laughs> and, but I made it soft enough so that it doesn't bother the film. But when you focus, you can hear that "pokai" sound. <laughs> I'm just just by myself. I'm laughing. Um, yeah. Um, and um, that's like that's like another "pokai" means like stupid or it's one of the swearing words um, in, in Cantonese that you're not supposed to use it in a film but um, it's there <laughs> again because I thought it's funny it's creative why not and yeah that was that was a very fun part another part was um, a rather more hardcore in the hardcore comedy hardcore comedy is a we call it three level which means it's like a 18 plus film 
So there's a film where the main character masturbates in the toilet, toilet by himself. And masturbation, um, you say it dafeke in Cantonese. And I'm surprised you know. Dafeke. <laughs> and then I'm like, dafeke? D A F E R G A I. Okay. And then sometimes, and then I look at the keyboard and it's like A, B, C, D, F, G. Okay. So if I convert this. Uh, a, B, C, D, F, G, and H, I, then actually I can use this keyboard to play Da, Fe, A, G. Why not? So that's why on the scene when he was Da, Fe, G, ing the first intro I really played D, A, F, E, I, G, A, I. And then, of course, nobody would know. I would know. and But that's another personal, um, it's a classical um Approach. There's a there's a there's a classical composer called Ravel that did this, but um, this is uh, again using my inner child <laughs> mentality to <laughs> apply it to a film that I think I'll co- continue doing it because it's somehow very exciting for me. Um, a- another part that one more one more like another inner child thought that it's not the film is not out yet. It's a scary film called Caller. It's actually a Hollywood film that was um the story was bought and then he reshot in China. So th- and that's actually it's a China film. Um, after I made the whole music, which I tried my best and it's 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 a it's like genu- genuinely scary. I felt like yes, I wanted to add something creative because I was like something was missing in my heart. So. Um, I met this Hong Kong local art artist, I was an artist, that he invents his own instruments. Very interesting. His name is Keith. Keith invented this instrument that can convert human heartbeat, or it's not just heartbeat, human's um, re- reaction to something scared or to a music note. I'm like, wow. Can I put that in my film? He's like, yeah. Okay, let's put that. So, <laughs> after I did the whole film, I asked my friend that who doesn't like scary film to attach that device, put locker in a room, a dark room, and watch the film with the, with my music, but of course with the earphone. And then she would be scared, and then the the music note will go boom, 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 and I make that into a, like a very low frequency sound. So her reaction has turned into a sound and is secretly in the film the whole way through. Nobody will know again. But I did put it into the film. <laughs> I if you ask me why, I just don't know why, but that's just the the creati- yeah, that's the something in me that just make me want to be creative. Yeah. Not to show off to people because nobody will know, right? Yeah. But just for, for my personal satisfaction. Mm. I think creativity wise it's the same but when it comes to the final po- final production sound for example as you said the orchestra sound nowadays the young composer does use like midi fake orchestral sound but of course the real orchestra sound is m- better a lot of times so like in the bigger film like for example it's a co- co-production film I'm able to Hire like an orchestra from um, Czech. Like I don't like it's. I think the first line walker I did use a. I won't say orchestra, but like a like a chamber string chamber with a brass chamber in Hong Kong and recorded in the Shaw Brothers recording studio as well. So I think um, when the budget allows, of course I would love to record the real orchestral sound. These days it's getting cheap. I think because of the remote conveniency but before I when I have to record in Hong Kong it's much more expensive I have to travel to the Czech then it's much more expensive but the last few films like I was able to do it remotely so that's that's much better but creativity wise it's the same it's only that recording process that will be different I think mm. It's tend to be longer because I think mainland f- 
film has a censorship period that you have to wait and that's not that's uncontrollable and I, I have no idea the details but that waiting time allows me to change things so actually my impression is core production film has that waiting period so have a longer time mm. which is good they don't care about my music they only they will only care about the lyrics so I will have to just present my lyrics like if there's a song but beside that I never experienced something that oh you cannot compose rock you cannot compose rap I never had that kind of um, pressure um, throughout the co-production or non-co-production I never had that experience yeah I think it's the, it might be the one of the scriptwriter and the director might have to go through that censorship this is a very interesting question because always commercial and the art it's 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 a it's a very hard place how much you want to be com like the typical or how much you want to be of your like selfish i have a theory that if you're doing a f film music um it's good to be original if you can but i think more you have to be f thinking as film first director is the person who created this film and you are here to accompany director's thought I, I like this word from um, Gampuida, Peter Kam he said music composer have to magnify the director's um, vision in terms of music so if you put your own selfish thought I want to be creative I want to be original I want to be outside Hans Zimmer I want it's, that's the you're, you're being very self-centered um, when you're doing a film music if you want to be self-centered, you should just do it on your own album or in your own art field. But if you're there to accompany a director's film, then that self-centeredness will be an obstacle sometimes. So I think if you naturally become creative, like for example, you know, you put a, like a Japanese music in the... <laughs> if, that, if that was director's will, that's good. But I think um, film music, film is a, it's a teamwork like how band music is a teamwork like how soccer is a teamwork you cannot just be I want to show off my own skill and you just go run and try to chase the ball like a soccer that's not I, I personally I, that's not that's not what I like to do yeah like um the best band or best arrangement is always when the teamwork functions so well so I don't try to think oh, I have to copy it or not copy it but I just always just try to maximize what the director is looking for and in terms of line walker he is trying to give this s strong tension to the audience in term he um to always betray that audience um how do you call it expectation in in that genre so um my function was always to really support that mentality not like I'm trying to okay add Erhu inside here in an action film yes no that's not I think that's it's easy to, it's easy to do that but that's not you know the best answer to me yeah, so I think it's case by case like how much challenge you want to do yeah Line Walker 2 was in that short <laughs> one month <laughs> period I think I think I did try my best <laughs> to make it exciting it's a great film I think Well, he was very kind. He actually came over to me and we had a lunch before he started shooting. So he started describing the story before um, we even, like, how do you call it? That's very rare to have a story told by a director. So that was, that made me a lot, a lot of time to um, think about the film and then slowly, slowly, like, have like my own ideas and oh, it was very s I did also have a hard time in trying to be like express the best there's a lot of scenes that I just made the music four, five, six, seven times <laughs> and the director just cannot get 
that we, we I, I struggled so much to get the right mm, style or right melody or but um there was one scene that I keep making and it, it didn't work and then I think it was the fourth time I asked my wife to sing in a scene and then then I had a I had a go sign so there's one scene that my wife is singing inside of <laughs> in the cl- one of the climax female fem- cl- crying scene my wife her voice is inside I don't know like the director's f- director's mentality is something I always uh, always curious um, and Derek Sun has quite a western um, influence too and he's very fluent in English so I think the l- music he listens is naturally very global too um, I think that maybe that indirectly influenced me in that film particularly I was doing a piano music but it's not it was not that maybe typical love romance like dramatic music that maybe the Hong Kong film have made it was kind of mixture of his taste and my personal taste that is very sensitive very feminine Hayward Mark is one of the most talented <laughs> human being you know I've, I've, I've been I've witnessed with my eyes like she there's a lot of time she's a professor in the university and um, she we always talk about philosophy outside work and then there was time we just like keep talking about that kind of like inner child like in, in me inner child in her like the emotional intensity in our life like and this kind of um, idea came into my mind while I was working on this film this and again like just how I did on the mad world there was many nights the director would come in like 1 <laughs> or like 12 a.m. okay let's start composing until the morning the sunrise we go it's mucked up like we just keep she's sitting here and then I'm just playing oh that's good okay, okay like, oh, that one oh, cut from here I don't like it okay let's do it again and then again the climax scene was composed that way because I just keep doing it until like you know, sh- we're both happy with it it's the, it's the, uh, again it's the ending scene it's Im- pretty much improvised one shot at the <laughs> <laughs> I just uh, you know mod- like did the fine tuning afterwards yeah so I think mm, this again when the director is really really talented and um, they they give a strong influence in me as well so I I I really think this is a best way to do the f- film music to have a um, like a strong what do you call it, strong vision like that if t- when a director has a strong vision that would just help me very much like and it's much easier for me to write the right music He is a music lover. Romo Cho is he. Uh, sometimes he has his guitar, and he <laughs> this is his director's place. And um, he first film I worked was Great Detective, and again his musical choice was a very outside the norm. He he used the music from the nineteen twenties, like Henry Mancini style, like or in Henry Man- like those like it, those classically trained, but. He, Henry Mancini is like a jazz composer as well it's it's those genre that was um, in, b- in the boundary of classical and jazz so Roy has like just selected that music and then I think actually that music is not that easy to compose Henry Mancini they're masters but because I was playing those music inside like for years in the hotel and I I know how you know like so that's why Actually, it was very, 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 very easy for me to, um, like, quickly learn that. I actually, I probably respect Henry Mancini. Henry Mancini is one of my favorite composers of all time. So, like, like a lot of the music is like very in that style too. Um, he, he is 
but he it's not that he is in in love in that genre he he just have a very strong sense in music so again he was always helping me in um in, in finding the right direction knockout the theme song was sang by the director yes and um i think i was paying attention to the touching scene more than the, the fighting scene and then the most importantly the the dynasty warrior that's coming i hope coming soon um because he allowed me to record the orchestra so i was able to record the real orchestra and this ha- this is a miracle because um earlier you were talking like there you were talking about uh, how creative you want to be or how commercial you want to be this film is um really in the boundary of creativity and commercial to me in, in my in my career this using a lot of chinese instrument but at the same time dynasty warrior is a japanese game sound japanese game the dynasty warrior has been using rock music in the games because it's a game so i blend in that rock element with the chinese music and with the orchestra sound and um to me that became a very unique tone in the in the chinese film like chinese film a historical film there's not much guitar sound because it's almost like, outside the genre but because it's dynasty warrior it allowed me to do so so that's why this is a chinese dynasty war dynasty warrior is a chinese historical film but has a guitar sound <laughs> yeah um i cannot wait to that how it would sound in the cinema but um this is not intentional it just happened to be that way so i'm very happy how it ended to be very creative in that chinese historical film while i'm composing i once in a while recall my university time that i was sitting on the tv <laughs> playing the dynasty warrior with my friends you know just like you know pressing it and then now like okay i'm working on this dynasty war it was a pressure honestly um but at the same time i was similarly excited really really excited um that i should pay full respect to the the, com- the game composers who did that dynasty war and i know that this will be like internationally focused has how I was devoted in the game all the game fans would be interested so I try my best to not betray their expectations mm. I did work very hard for that film Great Detective I did the I didn't do the theme song but I did do the film soundtrack Ukong the film is like I didn't touch the soundtrack I just did one of the theme song Um, the director Derek Kwok which I used to work in the full strike has been looking for the right melody for this very important scene he asked a lot of composer can you give me a melody maybe he want to he's looking for the right song and then he, well I was one of them and he just called me can you write a song and then the night that he called me I wrote one song I wrote I wrote the song but I was d- very doubtful because how can I write a song like on the on the day he called and I just spent like two hours to write the melody I'm like okay sounds quite nice and I left it and like I'm, I think two three weeks later he's like okay can I have the song by tomorrow I'm, tomorrow I didn't touch anything <laughs> okay okay I quickly looked back that score and okay let me simply arrange it and then I arranged it and then oh Jin it's 2am yeah, can you sing can you just sing this song for me and then she sang it for me and then that was a the director loved it and then she that's why um she was able to use that theme song in as a um as a one of the theme song called C purple and it w- the melody was used inside the film I'm very very honored I didn't tell him that I just wrote on that <laughs> oops <laughs> but yes that's what happened on that song and um for the for the direct uh sorry for the Jackie Chan film I did two theme songs for the film I didn't touch the soundtrack I think I only did the song one was called Twin Flames sang by Jane Zhang a globally recognized Chinese great singer she has a character that she can do the dolphin voice really high octave so that's inside a film inside a song too um, another ending song because it's a New Year's song the ending song was sang by Jackie Chan and Kung 
and I wrote the song. I was offered to write the song, so so I wrote the song. And then later on, there was a second composer that changed the melody a little bit. So it was co-write co-written by me and him at the end. Um, I did the arrangement, and then with with another arranger. Um, but uh, there was a little twist in this song. Um, I never said it anywhere because it was quite heartbreaking. Um, somehow during the process of production of this production, I don't know if it was if it was the investor or producer who, but they wanted to pitch this song to the Chinese New Year theme, like a national theme song. But they were worried that having a Japanese name might be a problem. I think they were just assuming, yeah. They didn't, they didn't hear anything. But so they were saying, "Can you not have my name?" I'm like, "That's a problem, you know. Like, <laughs> I guess I, I cannot accept that." And it was the close Christmas time. It was very heartbreaking. But at the end, um, I said, "Okay, if if you put my wife's name instead, you know, we're we're, we're two in one. You know, it's the same thing. Fine." So and that's what happened. At the end, it was not used in the national theme song. So if you look at the credit, it. Um, it's you have my wife staying there with the second composer, but it's actually me and that composer that wrote it. But it was um kind of a s- memorable experience, but um another motivation for me to you know like just work hard and um, it, it does hurt a little bit sometimes when I recall it, but I don't have any grudge. You know. I think they were just for the film you know, for the song. I it was okay. I I did say. Yes, it's for that, and um, one of the original reason for me to motivation that I'm in Hong Kong is I as a as an international person, like I'm very proud to be an Asian, and um, I'm very proud to live in Hong Kong and proud to learn all the Chinese culture, Hong Kong culture. I think I want to be a very global human being to be. You know, sharing each culture on each side, both like on. I want to share the Chinese culture to Japan, Japanese culture to culture to China, Hong Kong, and I think I cannot reach that yet. But eventually, throughout my career, I want to. Um, I hope, like, you know, this kind of issue wouldn't happen again. As I work harder, and if I became more. Recognize maybe that wouldn't happen anymore. I don't know, but yeah, I I didn't it didn't make me stop from, you know, uh, like it didn't ma- it didn't become a trauma, but it rather became a mo- another motivation for me to have a new goal. If there's a Japanese composer that might be looking at this, or any any composer that's looking at this, I think um, I first had a hard time um, learning new languages like I had like my childhood always um, had a this multicultural background and it was tough to be honest but um, that helped me so much in this global informative world if you want to be a fast learner I think it's a must to be um, more, more biling- bi- to me, I think it's good to be bilingual. Um, it could be s- Spanish and English, or Chinese and English, or Japanese and English. I don't know, but like that, it's not just the fact that you have more info to gain, but it's the fact that you are open mind to to accept something outside your territory. It's it's not that easy to 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 let this like obstacle come into come into you and then you you have to eat that it's 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 a nature for us to push it away but once you are keen to open to the different culture i think the world becomes so much more beautiful from your eyes and then um, asia has a lot of beautiful scenery as well as the, the western side has it too so i think i hope more people can be just like globally peaceful <laughs> accepting different culture that's that's my will to the, like all the composers and, and all the audiences actually mm.